One of the primary topics in the IT sector in recent years has undoubtedly become artificial intelligence, the development of which is mainly associated with the ChatGPT chatbot. The brainchild of OpenAI, it has shown impressive results, and it's not surprising that it has caused a real stir all over the world. And people associate what is happening with the name of Sam Altman, who in 2015, together with Elon Musk, became the founder of the infamous OpenAI. In just a few years, the project took off and the company's capitalization began to amount to tens of billions of dollars. Yes, later the excitement somewhat subsided, but nevertheless, OpenAI remains one of the key IT companies, and Sam Altman is one of the most significant figures in this field around the globe. How did he manage to achieve such truly impressive results in a relatively short time? In this episode, we'll answer in this question. Sam Altman and his outstanding success is what we'll discuss today. Welcome to Wealth History and let's continue. First Personal PC at Age 8 <sighs> Happy Birthday Sam! 8 years is a serious age, so we've prepared a gift for you, respectively, a serious one. Jerry Altman made a short breathtaking pause and then continued. I never dreamt of such a thing in my childhood. Then there were simply no such things. Well, now you have become the owner of your own computer and can use it at any time. He took a step to the side and his son Sam Altman saw the boxes with the gift among these boxes. A Mac LC2 computer, a monitor and other accessories for it. For a second, he even closed his eyes. How incredible it seemed to him what was happening. After all, computers are expensive things and not everyone has one. And now he'll have his own personal computer. Wow, thank you, Dad, he said. Can I put it in my bedroom? I want to see my computer all the time. Of course you can, Altman Sr. smiled. It's your thing now, so do what you want with it. But still, I would advise you not only to play, but also to study it. A very promising field of activity. Now a lot of money is being made on it, and perhaps you'll also like to do it. Who knows? And Jerry thought, $2,200 is certainly a lot, but my son is very happy, and this is the main thing. If he wants to become a programmer, let him start early and not waste time. Silicon Valley loves the young and energetic. There is the most expense for them now. However, let him choose for himself what to do in life. Later, when he became the director of his first IT company, Sam Altman recalled this incident with a wide smile, especially when he compared the parameters of his first computer with what he had more than 10 years later. Oh man, you know, he said to the journalist with a smile. Back then, the hard disk was only 40 megabytes and you had to access the internet via telephone line. There were no mobile phones and all negotiations were heard by the family. Well, then everything began to change dramatically and it was a very useful experience, although today everything is completely different for children. By that time, Altman had already graduated from high school and went to California, where he enrolled at Stanford University and began studying computer science. Though, in his second year in 2005, he unexpectedly left his studies, or rather, unexpectedly for the people around him. He himself already understood perfectly well that he would not have enough time to study and simultaneously do business and he would have to choose one out of two things. Although he did not like efficiency and a few hours a day were quite enough for rest, that is, he did exactly what Bill Gates did in his time and similarly did not regret it later. I am an optimist. By the mid-2000s, the American IT market had already recovered from the consequences of the ruinous dot-com crash of the beginning of the decade, which led to its radical renewal and redistribution. Multi-billion dollar investments began to flow here again, and startups in Silicon Valley began to emerge as rapidly as in the 1990s. And those who had ideas could raise millions and even tens of millions of dollars to implement them, as Altman did in 2005. Then he became the CEO and co-founder of Looped, a company that developed a mobile application of the same name, in which it was planned to build a geolocation function. In this capacity, Sam worked for several years and managed to attract about $30 million to the company. Not a bad result at all for a young man under the age of 25. However, Looped was unable to gain enough users and had to think about where it could be placed. 
As a consequence, the company was bought out by Green Dot Corporation, which offered a staggering $43.4 million for it. In other words, the investment paid off, and while some didn't get rich from it, the useful experience in IT was much more expensive. I am an optimist and do not think at all that computers will eventually replace people, Altman said in one of his interviews at that time. In my opinion, people are creative and human desires are limitless, so more and more new things will appear over time. True, I don't know what all this will look like, but I'll tell you what. If you're not an optimist, you'll make a very bad investor out of yourself. Sam knew what he was talking about, because he had recently been invited by the venture capital fund Y Combinator, and specifically for working with new ideas that were offered by startups wishing to receive funding. If an idea was recognized as promising, the company received a certain amount of money and more advice from experienced financial specialists. In exchange, the startup transferred a certain percentage of its shares to the fund, usually about 7 to 8 percent. But not everyone received such coveted funding. As Sam Altman later recalled, the foundation received about 40,000 applications a year, and no more than a thousand applicants were allowed to participate, of which in turn about half received money, or even less. Such an openly tough refinement, and Sam plunged headlong into this world of startups obsessed with new ideas, and according to him, he really liked this work. Hmm. And if so, why not try to create your own fund? Some thought one day. I got money, I can take a risk. Even if something does not work out, successful projects will fully recoup the losses and then make a profit. Well, no sooner said than done. And in 2012, Altman already had his own venture fund called Hydrazine Capital. And he didn't quit his previous job and is not going to do so. Why, if it's moving very successfully? Two years later, the total value of the companies related to Y Combinator exceeded a whopping $65 billion. And Sam started another business of his own. He invested $10 million in the Y Combinator Research Laboratory. And a little earlier, the founders of the company called him to their place. Well, Sam, you're doing a very good job and we are happy with your results, said one of the top investors, Paul Graham. And I'm sure that you would fully cope with the duties of the president. And my colleagues do not object to this. What do you say to this opportunity? And of course, Sam Altman immediately said, yes. He was used to being a leader since childhood and was not going to do otherwise. I will justify your trust. He added, in a couple of years, I hope to expand the company and provide funding for at least a thousand startups a year. And I'm thinking about investing in new directions. On the old baggage alone, today you won't go far. And so it happened. The foundation headed by Altman gave start to life to a number of well-known structures today. For example, in 2014, he led the social network Reddit for eight whole days during a reshuffle in management. It's noteworthy, by the way, that Reddit at that time had already faced various scandals and criticism for insufficient content moderation and the spread of extreme and toxic behavior on the platform. Altman managed to stabilize the situation and introduce a temporary order, which allowed the company to go through the transition period with minimal losses. Subsequently, Reddit significantly revised its rules and principles of community governance, in part due to the changes that some Altman laid down. It was an interesting time and truly amusing. This is how he would later respond to these days. Sam has invested in companies such as Pinterest, Asana, and a number of others, thereby providing his ability to foresee the future. It's not surprising that Forbes magazine named him the best investor under the age of 30 at the end of 2015. Yes, such turbulent biography at such a young age is quite a rarity, even in our time, especially since Altman's career was constantly going upwards. OpenAI and ChatGPT And at the end of the same 2015, another extremely important event took place in his biography, a meeting with the already well-known Elon Musk at that time. This young entrepreneur was already the founder of Tesla and SpaceX, but he was thinking about other areas of activity. One of them, in his opinion, in the coming years was about to be artificial intelligence, and therefore he was going to create a company in this area. Altman was enthusiastic about the idea and joined him. Hmm, what should we call the company? Hmm, maybe OpenAI? Sam asked thoughtfully during their next conversation. Open and friendly AI that can help people solve a variety of problems is exactly what we both want. This name of the company just expresses its main concept. It's short and well-recognizable. 
Moreover, we are about to cooperate with everyone who works in the same direction and will not hide the results of our research. There were no objections from Musk. He had long adhered to the same concept. His extensive acquaintances also provided funding. He was joined by such venture capital sharks as Peter Thiel and companies such as Amazon and Microsoft. In total, it was possible to raise the desired billion dollars and the company began its activities as a non-profit structure, which at that time employed just nine people. But the following year, OpenAI released its first product, a public beta version of the OpenAI Gym platform for the development of new machine learning systems. The debut was quite successful, and after that, the company began to create more advanced AI models. The first of them was the OpenAI 5 program for playing the popular computer network game Dota. And after the first tests, it turned out that it beats professional players in the one against one mode. Although in the team mode, it was still inferior to humans. But over the next two years, the slagging was corrected. And in April 2019, the program began to beat professional teams. And then the percentage of fights won exceeded 99%. Awesome, Altman said on this occasion. But what we did before is still a pretty narrow specialization. Now we need to work on a model for natural language processing. It'll be in demand by everyone and it'll be possible to gradually improve it. And surprisingly, it took the OpenAI team only three years to develop such a model. And when the coronavirus pandemic raged in the world in May 2020, an article was published on the algorithms of a fundamental novelty, the GPT-3 chatbot. The progress was really impressive. Just the number of parameters used by the program exceeded 175 billion functions, and more than 570 gigabytes of various texts were used for training the chatbot. However, soon after the release of the new chatbot, the company departed from its previous principles and limited access to its programming interface. This was quite unusual for Sam Altman and he had to come forward with an explanation of the reasons why he had to do this. Well, of course, I'm still in favor of open source software, he said. But you see, our developments are not cheap and we need constant funding. And the money earned by the company in this way will allow it to continue its research in any case. And in addition, even small companies that would otherwise have to build their own infrastructure will be able to access GPT-3 through our API. After a short pause, Sam continued. And in this way, we are going to limit access to AI technologies to those who abuse them. Sad to say, but the further we go, the more such cases will occur and we are forced to take appropriate measures. As a result, only Microsoft received an exclusive license to use the GPT-3 model in its products, while the rest had to use it only through an interface controlled by OpenAI. When Elon Musk got to know about this, he was very dissatisfied. But by that time, he had left the company's management and therefore limited himself to a comment on Twitter. This clearly looks like the opposite of the previously declared openness. In fact, OpenAI has now been taken over by Microsoft. Yes, it didn't look very good and many then joined Musk, negatively commenting on such a rapid change in Altman's previous position. Nevertheless, he received the much-awaited funding and the company continued to develop its language model. Less than three years later, it presented an even more advanced development, GPT-4, which became a real sensation of the year. Many have even started talking about the AI boom and the imminent unprecedented progress in this area in the world. Once a billionaire and a conflict with Musk. However, these expectations turned out to be clearly overestimated. Although the obvious progress and noticeable difference between the models were mentioned by everyone who had a chance to work with them, Altman even came to the US Congress where he demonstrated the brainchild of his company, focusing on improved security elements in comparison with other AI models. It turned out that, in comparison with the previous program, GPT-4 showed much higher accuracy in the ability to summarize complex texts, was able to comment on images and even successfully passed exams for a number of professions. In general, talk of an AI invasion was grounded, and Elon Musk was the first to sound the alarm about it once again. We call on everyone working in the field of AI to suspend the training of systems more powerful than GPT-4 for at least six months. And this must be announced publicly, with the possibility of checking the implementation of this decision. If it cannot be adopted as soon as possible, governments need to intervene and impose a moratorium on such research. He said in an open letter and was supported by more than a thousand AI experts including Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak. In general, the hype on the topic turned out to be excellent. 
And on May 16 of the same year, Sam Altman had to testify before representatives of such structures as the U.S. Senate Judiciary Subcommittee on Privacy, Technology and Legislation on AI Surveillance. While there, he proposed the creation of a global or national U.S. agency to license the most powerful AI systems. As this technology evolves, we realize that people are concerned about how it can change the way we live. Therefore, the new agency should have the authority to revoke previously issued licenses in order to ensure compliance with safety standards," he said then in his speech. That is, Sam in fact abandoned his previous views about openness and many people took it extremely disapprovingly. Discussions on this matter were stormy, and in November 2023, the OpenAI board decided to remove its director from office with the wording, due to loss of trust. This move caused a real shock in the technology community, because Altman was not only one of the founders of the company, but also its official face. A lot of OpenAI employees threatened to leave their positions in protest if the decision was not reconsidered. Mass discontent led to the fact that a few days later, against the backdrop of pressure from both inside and outside, the company was forced to reconsider its attitude to what was done. Well, five days later, its representatives had to back down and bring Sam Altman back, since almost all employees of the company were against his absence. If you don't bring Sam back, we'll just quit. The end of story, they said. And we'll go to work for him, and you just try to replace us here. We'll see how it turns out. Yes, there was really no one to replace the founder of the company and the people so extremely loyal to him, and therefore the board had to back down. Altman returned to the company again and still has it. And all this distress did not affect either his authority or his fortune, which, according to Forbes magazine, exceeded a billion dollars. And in April 2024, Sam for the first time got into the ranking of billionaires of this renowned publication. Such was his path to success and wealth, which came to him at a fairly young age, less than 40 years old. Well, how his fate will develop in the future will depend only on himself. That was Wealth History. We hope you enjoyed watching this episode and in case if you want to watch other episodes we have, click on the screen, subscribe and leave a like and see you later.